The brain is a beautiful work of art, but if you live in there for a long time, you'll miss your chance at experiencing the world around you. Welcome to another episode of Challenge Your Mindset. I'm your host, Nuda. And you know, I'd like to just say that I am the type of person who enjoys moving. I like a little bit of change sometimes. And even if it's something as simple as not moving from one place to another, but rather a little bit of changing up your atmosphere by like moving your bed from one side of the room to another, moving your couch in the living room from one side to the other, just moving things around to make you feel refreshed make the space feel like it's a new space and allows your brain just to feel a little bit cleaner maybe a little less cluttered now you know when you're moving your couch about the living room when you're starting to push that couch and it just it's a little harder to start it than to actually keep it going if we think of it from a physics perspective there's a term called static friction and then there's kinetic friction now static friction is the friction that's going against the force that is holding that object down and so you have to push a little harder in order to get that object going and kinetic friction surprisingly enough is actually lower than static friction Static friction is holding it down. Kinetic friction is lower. And so that's what makes it easier for you to keep pushing that object than for you to get that object going in the first place. Because we know an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an external force. But we're not getting into the physics of all of this, right? We want to think of it from a psychological perspective. If we take this idea of static friction and kinetic friction into a psychological perspective and even into our own personal lives, we can see it happening in our day-to-day life. Let's say you need to do your dishes and you're sitting and you're binging this new show. It's so interesting. It's amazing. But you know that you need to get yourself going and doing those dishes they've been sitting there for a while and you need to get them done before you go to bed now we all know that the act of leaving that show and starting on the new task of doing the dishes is much harder than just continuing to do the dishes similarly if you have other things that you want to get started let's say you want to start a business let's say you want to start a new instagram account to showcase your art it's much harder to get started than to actually keep on going and that's exactly what we'll be talking about today the challenges of getting started and how to overcome them after this short break and we're back so my brain similar to many of our brains looks for ways to get me to back out of a decision that i have already made Because it likes to stay within its comfort zone. It likes to stay within the box that I've already created for it. It's tried things that were new before. It doesn't want to do them again because it's comfortable where it's at. But in order to move forward, you have to push yourself out of that comfort zone. So we have to get past that static friction and get into the kinetic friction to keep moving forward. So here are some of the challenges that I have faced and continue to face and some of the challenges that you might be facing with getting started on anything we all know that number one there's always an uphill battle number two we're afraid we're afraid of something so fear is a big part of it number three lack of confidence this is huge it's a huge umbrella number four not knowing every single aspect of what we're trying to hop into number five the amount of work that we have to do is daunting number six focus or lack thereof number seven we're looking too far into the future and number eight we're comparing ourselves to the experts right so let's dive a little deeper into each one so number one the uphill battle the uphill battle consists of a few questions you know are you willing to put up a fight against anything that comes your way are you willing to say no to going out with your friends because you block this time off for a project are you willing to remove distractions and meaningless tasks to do whatever you said that you would do are you willing to actually put in the time and energy to learn the topic at hand and with all of these questions The answer should be yes, but I know that the answer sometimes is no. So knowing that you will never feel 100% ready is very helpful. 
because you want to change the trajectory of your life, because you want to do something you're passionate about, because you love yourself and you have chosen to love the journey to becoming the true and most authentic you. In order to get to that part, you have to get yourself in a mental state of saying, yes, I am willing to fight against anything that comes my way. I am willing to block off time for this project and say no to going out with friends. I'm willing to remove the distractions and meaningless tasks and and yes, I am willing to put in the time to learn how to get out of the box that I've put myself in. So the uphill battle, the way to get out of that is to know and be sure that you will never be 100% ready. It's never going to be a perfect time. So you just got to do it. Number two, fear. There's a lot of types of fear. There's fear of What are people going to think or say? Fear of failing, fear of success, fear of having people know that this is what you want to do. Fear of making a fool of yourself in front of those people that you know and people you don't know. Fear of losing money. And all of this can be summed up as fear of darkness, fear of the unknown. Because you don't know what to expect. You don't know who or what will be on the other side. You don't know how this will change who you are, how you will change going through this, right? And so if let's start with the first one. If you're afraid of people talking about you, the one thing you should know is that they talk no matter what about the things that you want to do, about your success, about your failure. Regardless of what you do in your life, people will talk. For example, someone has become successful. Let's say a friend of yours became successful. You you probably, you might have heard, Oh my God, did you hear that Sarah? Yeah, Sarah decided to make this like cute little company of hers, but it's actually successful. Can you believe that? Sarah of all people? Or it could be the other way where it's like Sarah's failed and it's like, oh my God, did you hear Sarah's little company just failed? We already knew that before she even decided to step foot in that door. So either way, we've heard people say it both ways. People are gonna talk. People talk because people who want to talk will talk. People will talk no matter what. I have a mind-blowing concept for you. If you fail, try again. First, that's an indication that at least you've tried. You took a step that so many others have refused to take. So many people's brains already talk them out of doing whatever you want to do. But you pushed yourself to become unlike them. You took the road less traveled. If you're afraid of success because you don't know what your life would become after, are people going to be treating you differently because of this success? Do they? Would they like you for who you are or for these new changes? Again, focus on yourself. Don't focus on others. Right now, I want you to focus on you. Know what you want and what's best for you and do that for you, not for others. If you're afraid of losing money, use the money that you're not afraid to lose in order to venture out, right? So within your budget, set aside 5 to 10% of whatever money that you're making for yourself, for your endeavors. Take a little bit of money away from the Treat Yourself Fund and put it into the Current Dreams and Future Reality Fund. Use the money you're not currently using. If you're afraid of the dark, of the unknown, know that you've already been through darkness before. It may be a different room with different obstacles, but it's all the same darkness. You're familiar with darkness. Your whole life, you started out with darkness, right? You came out of your mom's womb into some light, but it was actually all darkness. Everything was new. Everything was uncertain. When you took your first step, you didn't know if you were going to topple. You didn't know. And yet you still took your first step. If you're afraid of that darkness, take a night light with you. It might be helpful. Ask someone you know to help hold you accountable to doing whatever you're setting out to do. If you know someone who's been through the journey before, step on your ego a little bit and ask for their help. Ask for their guidance. Ask them to mentor you. And if you feel like you don't have somebody, you don't have resources, and you don't have someone to talk to about your fears, write them down. Then logically go through them and ask yourself, why am I afraid? And ask yourself, how can I change that? It can help to talk through it with someone to talk about your fears out loud but it might be easier for you to write them down. That doesn't make the fear go away, but allows you to actually put it out into the world and tell yourself, I understand that this is where I am now. I want to conquer this fear. I want to conquer my life. And this is how I'm going to take the first step. Number three is lack of confidence. 
It's a huge umbrella. You can lack confidence in so many different areas. Your mind can come up with things nobody else would have ever thought of. Lack of confidence in yourself, lack of confidence in your plan. Can I do it? Can I not do it? I want you to first and foremost, right now, while you're sitting here listening to this podcast, give yourself permission to fail. I find that lacking confidence happens when you strive for perfection. And when you do this multiple times and you don't achieve what you set out to achieve, your confidence just starts to go lower and lower and lower until it plummets. So, but by giving yourself permission to fail, you're saying that no matter what happens, I will not allow it to define who I am, right? You're giving yourself space that I don't care what the outcome is. I am trying for the sake of trying. So failure will no longer be a part of your vocabulary. And without it being a part of your vocabulary, it doesn't define what your confidence is. And it will help give you that extra boost of confidence for you to actually go out and do what you're setting out to do. Lacking confidence in your plan, know that your plan, no matter what, will never be perfect because you don't know what you don't know. So your plan is bound to need adjustments. As you go forward, no matter what you've done before in life, things pop out of the blue and you always need to adjust. So be ready to adjust and know that your plan is never going to be perfect and accept that. Number four, not knowing every single aspect of what you're trying to hop into. I want you to ask yourself this. Did you educate yourself enough about the field? I didn't say, do you know everything about the field? Because no matter what field you decide to go into, you will never know everything about the field. Do you feel like you learned enough to just put your foot through the door? Did you watch videos of people who have done it before? Take their advice, see what they've done, test it out yourself. Read a book. I realized that people write books out of experience, right? So let's say someone who has 10, 20 years of experience, you have a book from them that's 100, 200 pages filled with those years of experience. When you read that book, you're taking, you're not just taking 100, 200 pages, you're taking years of experience from someone else's life and you can implement that into your own life right, into your project, into whatever you're doing. So not knowing every single aspect is not a weakness. It is a strength because it gives you the space to learn. And know that no matter what, know that your journey is not identical to anyone else. So give yourself permission to learn through the process. Number five, the amount of work is daunting. It is scary. You know from experience that starting something new always has a learning curve. It takes time and effort. Do you have that time and will you put in that effort? So let me ask you this. Do you have time to scroll through your phone mindlessly for hours? Check your screen time. Take some of that time and dedicate it to working on whatever new project that you wanted to work on. Your screen time, let's say, is like four to five hours a day. Take one to two hours and dedicate it to this new project. Plan it out. Block time in your calendar as uninterrupted time for you to do this. Evenings are usually free for you. Guess what? Block off an hour in the evening for this project. People say an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Well, I want to tell you an hour a day turns your dreams into a reality. And I know that that doesn't actually rhyme, but it's something. Number six, focus. Are you lacking in focus? Focus is a challenge. We tend to get distracted or we find a way to distract ourselves. You might be lacking in focus because you just didn't make a plan. You lack a plan. You lack focus, you lack a plan. So if you make a plan, it might help you with focusing. You lack focus because you didn't dedicate time in your schedule to do this. So schedule time to do whatever you want to do. Make a plan and schedule a time to actually execute this plan. You might be lacking focus because you're anxious. You don't know what the future holds. Again, write down your anxieties. If you don't have someone to talk to, write it down. Your notebook, the that pen and paper is your best friend. It could really help you out. I find that what helps me the most is telling myself that I will do a task for five minutes. So let's say I need to get started on a project. I'm going to sit down and just do it for five minutes. The act of getting myself off my butt and doing the task for five minutes actually gives me momentum. Remember that static friction? It pushes me past that static friction into the kinetic friction zone. 
it gives me that push that I need to get focused. And once I start, I kind of don't want to stop because it's like, oh, I'm already here. Might as well keep going, you know? So with focusing, you might just have not scheduled a time. So schedule that time, make a plan and just get yourself to do it for five minutes. Number seven, you're looking too far into the future and that makes you scared. You're looking at how people get to X, Y, and Z instead of how they started. This makes it look like it's impossible to do. So instead, write a list of steps it takes to get to the final product. Then look at step one and do it. Don't look too far into the future because it might have taken them months, years, it might have taken them a long time to get to where they're at now. And lastly, number eight, you're comparing yourself to the experts. They've been doing what they're doing for years. That's what makes it challenging for you to get to where they are. You're comparing yourself to where they are now instead of where they've started. You're comparing yourself to where they are now, not the journey they took to get to where they are. Let me give you an example. I one day would like to have a YouTube channel. However, I see all of these YouTubers with the millions of subscribers, millions of views on their videos, hundreds of thousands of likes and comments. And I look at them and subconsciously, I might be comparing myself to them. And so what I like to do is actually click on this YouTuber and go to their videos and list it from the oldest video. And I like to take a look at that and compare it to where they are now and see how far they've come. What year did they publish their first video? What technology did they have now in comparison to back then? The types of editing, the expertise, the knowledge, right? And honestly, I have noticed it takes an average of three to five years for them to get to where they are now. The YouTubers that I've seen in different niches, this is not just in one niche, it looks like it takes them three to five years to get to where they are. And you have to keep in mind that people have different resources available to them. They don't have the same resources you have available to you right now. They have might have different responsibilities, different pressures in life, different support systems. Don't compare yourself to people. But if you do, compare yourself to where they started, not where they are now. Each person's challenges are different. I may or may not have mentioned everything going through your mind, but I want you to be you throughout this process. Getting started is hard. Acknowledge it, but don't dwell on it. Focus on taking that first step. Know that it's going to be challenging, but no matter how wobbly it may be, take it. Even if you know you'll topple over. The brain is a beautiful work of art, but if you live in there for a long time, you'll miss your chance at experiencing the world around you. I want to help you to get out of that beautiful brain of yours and get you working on your dreams. For this week's mindset challenge, I want to challenge you to take the first step to getting your project started. Start today, and I mean literally right now. Take five minutes to watch a video about what you want to do. Take five minutes to make a plan. Write down the first five things that you need to do to get this project off the ground. I want you to just take five minutes to start today. Start today and do it for a week. Five minutes consistently. If you get started on the five minutes and you feel like you have the time and energy and you want to put in the effort to put in more time, go ahead, do that. But I want you to at least put in five minutes to get your future off the ground today. And with that, that is all I have for you for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Challenge Your Mindset. Follow this podcast wherever you may cast your pods by hitting that plus button. You could also follow us on Instagram at Nura underscore unplugged. That's at N-O-R-A underscore unplugged. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you have a fabulous day and an even better week and I will see you next week.